All right, here it is. We are about to do a pre-flight on a Robinson R22 Beta 2. I believe it's a 2007 model. Let's go have a look. So here it is, Robinson R22. We're going to do a pre-flight. So first things first, let's get this little POH out. R22 Pilot's Handbook. Let's get that out of the case there. So we have the Robinson R22 Pilot's Operating Handbook. Open the cover up. Flip to Section 4, Normal, normal Procedures. As you can see, you can see general airspeed for safe operation, daily or pre-flight checks, 4-1. So all you do, here's 4I, I'm guessing that's index, it simply has a nice little paragraph on knowing what you should look for, section 4. So, 4-1, flip the page over to 4-2. Now, we're going to be going through this basically a do and verify so we're going to go down this checklist yet we're not going to use the checklist all right so we have our poh open what i usually do i usually go through my whole checklist all i think there's three or four pages go through it all and then come back and verify that i've done everything so the first thing that i usually do come up here flip my master switch on why my brake light works my alternator my old pressure light works and my governor off light works so I'm going to release that, re release the brake, come back here, just like the 44, push these buttons and check to make sure they correspond, make sure they work on the, on the dash. Remember the fuel light may have a couple second delay, so don't give up on that guy. Once you do that, come back up here, flip the strobe on. Check your, all your push buttons and your strobe is working. So we're going to be taking the cal section of the transmission. All you do, right here, unlatch it, flip that open, and then do the same thing right here. It's wet, I just washed it. Alright, so this is the cal section of the door. This is your tailor control. There's your bell crank. You have a push-pull tube. Make sure the torque stripes are on there. Make sure that nut, nut has not gone anywhere. If the torque stripe is missing, that can mean a couple things. It can mean that little pal nut has shifted. Most likely, it has. someone has rubbed the uh, uh, the torque stripe off, so just verify that you can't twist that paddle nut off. That's the outer one. Torque stripes on the push pull tube. Now you're going to be checking for make sure it can roll, but it shouldn't have any lateral or vertical movement. It should just twist freely. Then you should also check to make sure there's full travel, no interference, and everything's nice and smooth. So I like to follow this push pull tube down outside of this little cowling. Make sure that torque stripe is good. Once again, twist it, but it shouldn't move to the side or up and down, which it doesn't. Push pull tube, rod end, paddle nut with torque stripe. This is your tail rotor, another tail rotor bell crank. Make sure, once again, the torque stripes are there, and it shouldn't have any slop in it. It can move a little bit, but it shouldn't be, have excessive movement. So with this bell crank, when you do this, when you move it back and forth, check down here, make sure that that's not interfering with the fan scroll, fan housing. If it is, you know someone's had a hard landing or something's shifted, it's just simple as that. You see water there, I just washed this thing, so no worries. There's one of four of my main rotor transmission bolts or mounts. There's the rubber, make sure the rubber is dry and there's no oil. Um, you want to make sure it's dry of any oil. If anything, it may be a little wet from water, if you, especially if you just washed it like I did. Torque stripe you can see on the bolt itself. That's always a good thing to see. That way you know nothing has shifted. Wires going on to the main rotor transmission. There's my main rotor transmission teletemp. Make sure that that is not blackened all the way in. Make it, and take note of where that 
tell the temp is after every flight. That way you know if anything's changed. Here's the sight glass for the uh, main order transmission gearbox. Note that the oil is halfway up on the sight glass. That's right where it should be. If you're not sure of where the oil is supposed to be in the sight glass, check this little diagram. See where it says add in full. Right where it should be. So on the right side, you have your auxiliary fuel tank sump. All you do on this one, this is a beta 2, it's going to have this little line. Unclamp the line. Okay, you don't have to take that off, it's a pain to get back on. Come up here and simply push up. And by doing that, it's going to sump out fuel. Now, I normally don't do that. I always have something to catch the fuel in, um, but it's kind of hard to do that and carry a camera as well. Check out this cooling hose, this hose that goes from the fan shroud up through the main rotor gearbox compartment and it blows on the very bottom of that gearbox. I don't know if you can see it, but it blows on the very bottom since this is a really uh, confined area. It doesn't get a lot of air, air flow. So it's just another way of keeping everything nice and cool. Notice the safety wire is on that bolt. Make sure any, any safety wire you see, make sure it's always in the tightening position. Make sure all those this wiring harness is tight. It's not restricted. Zip ties are in place. I love how Robinson used zip ties, but hey, it works, it's light, it's cheap. Here's a bypass just in, just in case one of your switches on the on the column goes bad. That way you can still get out of out of wherever you are. Once again, check the wiring harness, check it all the way up and around. Notice it goes all up and all up and over this frame. So front portion and the back. Let's follow all the way around. Here's your ELT. Make sure that's nicely secure. See this white tubing that comes up and around with that wiring harness? Comes up right by the auxiliary fuel tank. That is your static port, static source. Um, it's a weird spot but it works and uh, there's hardly any chance of it getting icy. Alright, here are your belts. Here's your freewheeling unit. Make sure there's no grease getting slung out on this side of the bearing. It's really easy to see if it is. Or, say you don't see uh, grease in it right here, but you see something being slung up and around this uh, engine compartment. You can see a little residue off the front. This isn't our aircraft, but um, I just want to make sure. I haven't done a pre-flight on this one yet, so we'll see what that little spray is like. But that's a good example of what you'll see. So we're going to be looking right underneath uh, the auxiliary fuel tank. We're going to be spinning the drive train with your left hand on the freewheeling unit and belts. You're going to be checking the uh, flex plate which is the brass colored thing <laughs> and then the yoke flanges which is which are the brackets. This is the yoke flange. This is the flex coupling. You're looking for cracks most likely in the bend of the flex plate. You're also looking for cracks in the weld all the way around this on both sides. So what we're going to do, we're going to roll it, check the torque stripes at each of the pal nuts. If you don't see a torque stripe, make sure it's still tight. Looking for cracks, flex plate, and both yoke flanges. Notice the torque stripe there. There's four bolts at each flex plate. Um, check that one, make sure that's good. So that's how you do that. Notice the safety wire. Check for leaks up and around this brake. This is your brake actuator. When you pull down on the brake handle inside the aircraft, this little lever comes up and it presses a shoe on that tail rotor drive shaft and it just slows down. Um, one thing to look out for is if you use the brake too much, it gets the main rotor gearbox seal right behind this uh, brake. It gets it really hot and can possibly cause it to start leaking. So watch out for that. And if it does leak, if it does leak, you're going to see it. You may not see a lot here, but it's going to drift down and it's going to collect right by your firewall. So we've sumped that. We're going to reclamp it. See, it's clamped. You can resecure re it right there.